What is cybernetics? To find out, we must explore what it is and what it is not. Cybernetics is not artificial intelligence. Rather, cybernetics is a statistical approach to the theory of communication. It is a study of systems of effective action that require communication and feedback. Norbert Wiener, who developed this field of study, insists communication and control are inseparable concepts. Artificial intelligence is the accumulation of data, or a closed or complete structure, to replicate a human mind through duplication, yet it does not succeed. In contrast, cybernetics is an open system about regulation and feedback, using past information to inform present decisions. Today, we can see cybernetic theory in action through human-computer interactions. It is what informs our current mouse-computer interface. While often confused with artificial intelligence, cybernetics has informed many other disciplines, such as postmodern theory, human-computer interaction, our understanding of ecology, global warming, and the arms race. To understand how cybernetics as a field of study developed, we must take a look back at Norbert Wiener. The multidisciplinary approach to cybernetics is as varied as Norbert Wiener's educational pursuits. A child prodigy, Norbert entered college at the age of 11 and earned a degree in mathematics from Tufts College. By 1909, he began graduate studies at Harvard for zoology. However, by the end of that year, he obtained a scholarship to Cornell, where he switched to study philosophy and mathematics. By the time he was 18, he graduated from Harvard with a PhD in mathematical logic. He then went on to Cambridge to further his academic interests. At the outbreak of World War I, he returned to the United States. In 1919, he taught mathematics with physical systems at MIT, where he witnessed the significant developments of electrical power distribution and the spread of dial auto connect telephone networks. These inventions informed his development of the study of cybernetics, as did his work on the auto tracking firing systems of aircraft in 1939. The problem Wiener solved with the auto-tracking firing system was that at the high speeds of warplanes, the anti-aircraft guns needed to be aimed ahead of where the target was at that current moment, something impossible for a human to do accurately. His system utilized feedback from the outside world to calculate the probable position of the aircraft for aiming accuracy. His success was possible because he had already been working on the equations that used knowledge to predict future behavior. Despite his success, he realized that by arming the United States with new military technology, we would effectively arm our enemies with the same technology. Later in life, he refused to participate in the Manhattan Project. He believed that atomic weapons were too dangerous and would lead to the annihilation of us all. To understand how Wiener came to cybernetics, we have to address the second law of thermodynamics. Perhaps little Alvy in Annie Hall says it best. He's been depressed. All of a sudden, he can't do anything. Why are you depressed, Alvy? Tell Dr. Flicker. It's something he read. Something you read, huh? The universe is expanding. The universe is expanding? Well, the universe is everything. And if it's expanding, someday it will break apart, and that will be the end of everything. What is that your business? He stopped doing his homework. What's the point? What has the universe got to do with it? You're here in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is not expanding. It won't be expanding for billions of years yet, Alvy. And we've got to try and enjoy ourselves while we're here, huh? Huh? <laughs> An end is inevitable. But Wiener saw much more than this. The universe is expending what is finite energy, and at some point it will run out. This is called entropy, affecting everything from our concept of the world to our concepts of communication. Wiener believed this destructive end, while completely probable, is only guaranteed by our own inactivity. But won't progress save us? Americans blindly believe in progress even though every major religion has its end goal of getting out of here and arriving somewhere else. So why do we so desperately want to believe? 
Does it help us cope with the pace of the unprecedented industrial changes over the last 400 years? Our concept of progress was invented alongside this industrialization, and so blindly believing in progress will not save us. This brings us to the problems of today. To get new While everyone was searching, there was bailing. We're talking about bailouts. Billion dollars. Even While everyone was lost in the links, there was collapsing. This is a mess. There are companies nearing collapse. We don't need queries and keywords if they bring back questions and confusion. From this moment on, Search Overload is officially over. Starting today, we need the right information to make the right decisions. Decisions that help us feel right. Decisions that help us get to the right place at the right time, even if it's right around the corner. And we need to make decisions about what the right stuff is. Right now, it's time for the one and only, 100% engineered to cut through the crap decision engine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to be and decide. Microsoft would like us to believe that too much information is what caused our stock market and housing crash. But Wiener warned early on that the problems of automation would bring on such events. There is danger to handing over our decision making to machines. The problem of automation began with machines displacing factory workers. However, the ad from Bing ties to our current crisis of automation taking over our decision making capabilities. Language is a functional tool inherent to all humans, which enhances our communicative techniques. It is natural to want to place this capability into our machines. However, the danger is in human intellectual laziness. People are confused by what can be done and what can't be done by machines. The distinction must be made between what can be left and not left to humans. A worship of gadgets or machines used by man is a problem that must be recognized. If humans prefer to over-worship machines or we are unwilling to make decisions on our own, we are in for trouble, as our current crisis makes clear. Despite all of this, it is still possible to achieve islands that exist where entropy is decreasing. The dire end will occur only if we do not act. The integrity of the channels of communication are central to the health of a society. Decreasing entropy is to be achieved only through the function of balanced positive and negative feedback. The positive is the allowance of information, the negative is the restriction of it. If only one type of feedback occurs without a governing system, it will spiral out of control. This is cybernetics. We must have open systems that use feedback to inform our future decisions. Blindly believing in progress will not save us. <laughs>